The animation begins with Daniel and Hoagie embarking on a heist to steal an artifact ring from an art gallery. Using a crystal stone, he opens a portal to another dimension, and they frantically search for the ring. However, their escapade is discovered, and he is expelled from the tracking guild. To regain his membership, he must recover untraceable objects, including the Ring of the Mage Council. During their quest, they stumble upon a room full of mages, bathing in slime to maintain their youth. One of the mages is wearing the coveted ring, and Hoagie must retrieve it. As she reaches for the ring, the mage awakens, causing a chaotic chase through the room. In the end, Hoagie manages to escape with the ring and the mage's finger. Soon after, Bixby appears, determined to seize the ring for herself. Despite their efforts to protect it, she uses magic in public and exposes her powers to innocent bystanders. In a tense confrontation, she successfully takes the ring from Daniel, leaving him and Hoagie defeated. Shortly after their encounter with Bixby, Lucy from the Magic Enforcement Bureau arrives at the art gallery to erase everyone's memories of the magical events that took place. Then, Daniel assures her that he didn't use magic in a public place, and Lucy believes him, releasing them from her spell. After that, she reveals to them that she will become the new Primus and must find the wand that goes missing every time a new Primus is chosen. After that, Lucy requests their help in finding the wand, but Daniel refuses, preoccupied with his mission to retrieve untraceable objects to regain his membership in the tracking guild. Disappointed, she leaves. Soon after, Hoagie confides in Lucy, explaining that Daniel was expelled from the tracking union for breaking the code of ethics. Now, he must find untraceable objects by nightfall to regain his membership. Realizing her mistake, she feels guilty and tries to reconcile with Daniel. Then, Hoagie chases after him and convinces him to help find the other untraceable objects, ultimately leading to a thrilling race against time. On the other hand, Hoagie was feeling famished and craving a pizza when one suddenly appeared before him. However, the pizza had a strange behavior of following him around in mid-air. It wasn't until he met a woman named Shekula Chinda that he realized she was controlling the pizza. Daniel, who was with Hoagie, soon learned that Shekula had deliberately led them to meet her. As it turned out, Shekula knew all about Daniel and sought his help to find her missing older brother Jace, a legendary tracker who had been gone for some time. Despite his initial reluctance, he agreed to help after Shekula offered an untraceable object, the all-seeing eye of Cyclops, as a reward for finding her brother. However, the problem was that the only clue to Jace's whereabouts was in his base, which only a tracker could access. Soon after, Daniel, Hoagie, and Shekula entered the large room. There, they faced a challenging obstacle course. Despite their best efforts, Daniel fell into a trap of thorns that turned out to be a magical game created by his older brother, Jace. They had to work together to get past the obstacles and reach the button at the end of the room. After two failed attempts, Daniel came up with a plan, and Hoagie pushed the button while Shekila used her chakra as a shield. Finally, they made it through and entered his tracking base, where they searched for clues. Then, Daniel discovered a note from Jace, indicating that he had been investigating Spellbound, his family's organization. They also found Shekila's family war hammer, and when she held it, she floated and lost consciousness. Seeing that, Daniel used his strength to remove the hammer, and Shekila woke up. There, Shekila explained that while unconscious, she had been in the spirit world and met her ancestors, who taught her how to use her chakra as a shield. Then, Daniel asked why Jace had been investigating Spellbound and had a magic maintenance book and an ancient seeker. However, she was unaware of this information. As they continued their search for Jace's whereabouts, they stumbled upon a clue to a Bermuda Triangle map, leading them to believe that he may be there. Meanwhile, Lucy sought out Camilla, who was imprisoned, to ask for Primus Wand. However, she refused to give it to Lucy, insisting that only a virtuous person could use it. Unfortunately, a bureau officer overheard their conversation, forcing Daniel to search for clues elsewhere. Then, Daniel decided to play bowling at Jace's headquarters and was unsuccessful. But Shaquilla immediately scored a strike, triggering the opening of a secret dungeon. Inside, they met Horuspex, a fortune teller who knew Daniel from a previous job tracking Aztec's caterpillar hairs. Afterward, Daniel asked for his help in reading the map to find Jace, but he requested a trade of secrets to access the information. Shekula revealed that she wanted her brother back because she felt lonely, and her sincerity won over Horuspex, who discovered Jace's location in the Bermuda Triangle. 
they hopped on an ice cream truck that teleported them to a ship where they hoped to find Jace. Suddenly, a teleportation spell caused a commotion, nearly tipping their ice cream truck into the depths of the sea. The trio scrambled to prevent the truck from tumbling down and narrowly escaped the depths of the sea. As they gathered their bearings, they discovered a group of alchemist soldiers had been turned into golden statues. Bewildered and uncertain of what to make of the situation, they were suddenly jolted back to reality but as zombies with a fierce hunger to attack. Suddenly, a pungent stench of decaying magic filled the air, emanating from a mysterious soul box that Shakilla believed held her sister captive. Amidst the chaos, a security drone materialized and joined the fray, fending off the zombie alchemists. At that time, Daniel had an idea to unlock the soul box, while Shakilla stood guard with her protective shield. Meanwhile, Hoagie was tasked with distracting the zombie army. Then, suddenly, the soul box suddenly sprang open, and out stepped Jace but to their horror, he had transformed into a demon and launched a vicious attack. As Shekilla valiantly fought to revive her brother, the group was relentlessly beset by Jace's demonic fury. But Daniel had a cunning plan to awaken Jace from his spell-induced rage, and handed him a powerful war hammer. With a thunderous blow, Jace snapped out of his trance and recognized Shekilla, finally returning her brother to her arms. Then, they welcomed Jace into their fold, and he explained his quest to locate the spellbound family and ancient lineage of knights and their hidden temple, believed to be located in the Bermuda Triangle. It turned out that, Jace had been captured by Victor Albright, a notorious alchemist, and imprisoned in a soul box for years, emerging with twisted devil horns as a result. But time was running out, and Daniel proposed a deal in exchange for Jace's help in locating an untraceable object. They would assist him in his search for the treasure chest containing ancient spellbound magic. Intrigued by the mystery of his family's heritage, Daniel agreed to their mission. Using a tracking tool, Jace led them to the spellbound shrine, and an elusive island emerged from the sea before them. Not long after, they stepped onto the mysterious island and Jace implored Daniel to assist him in marking the outer mat track, while regaling them with the heroic history of the spellbound family's precepts revered for safeguarding and procuring rare magics. Daniel was surprised to learn that his own last name carried such a weighty legacy. After that, Jace poured a magic liquid over the spell, causing it to emit a brilliant glow. But when he attempted to touch it, the mermaid's protective magic repelled him. Luckily, Daniel wielded the chain scale shield bestowed upon him by the mermaids, and with a deft touch, unlocked the mystical stone. It revealed the location of the spellbound temple, just opposite them. As they made their way towards the temple, Shakila and Hoagie found themselves besieged by ferocious iguana monsters. Soon after, Jace and Daniel came to their aid, but were soon confronted by another of the vicious beasts. Fleeing towards the safety of the spellbound temple, they braced themselves for whatever dangers lay ahead. After that, they climbed on a rock, which turned out to be a mother iguana monster, and the chase continued. Shekilla used her shield to attack, but the monster's legs grew back. They took refuge in a cave, where Jace marveled at his mission's progress, and Daniel revived him to save Shekilla and Hoagie. Eventually, they escaped on a ship, but the iguana monster was still in pursuit. Jace revealed that the ancient power in the spellbound chest could reverse their current state, and they set off to return home. Jace planned to give Daniel his untraceable object, but suddenly the iguana monster caught up to them and boarded their ship. Soon after, Jace dives in to save a teleportation ice cream truck and drowning. There, they escape by teleporting away, but the truck's power runs out, leaving them stranded. So, Jace saves the day by using his powers to recharge the truck and they arrive at an outpost where he had intentionally stored his untraceable object. However, they face a new problem when they find out that Daniel has a bad reputation with Kel, the outpost guard, for bringing bureau officers there. 
Jace and Shaquilla go inside to retrieve the object, while Daniel and Hoagie wait in the truck. However, Kel refuses to hand over the object without making a deal, causing Jace to negotiate with him. Meanwhile, Daniel reveals that he was kicked out of the Tracker's Guild for bringing bureau officers to the outpost. Then, Kel eventually agrees to the deal, but warns them not to cause any trouble or else they will regret it. Out of nowhere, Kel pulled up in an ice cream truck to collect debts from Daniel. Before they knew it, they were whisked away to the headquarters of the tracking union, where they were faced with the prospect of torture as retribution for their loss. Shortly after, Hector greeted Daniel as an old colleague, but he remained insistent that he possessed an untraceable object still in the possession of Jace who was believed to be dead. The, the other trackers scoffed at his claim, and Daniel was punished by spinning the punishment wheel for failing to produce the object. Meanwhile, Lucy approached Pie Maker in search of magic silver to aid her in finding Primus Wand. However, she refused to divulge any information, as the silver was only available to mages. As punishment, Daniel and his accomplice Hoagie were thrown into the tickle hole. One of the trackers accidentally tumbled into the hole and the group was left in hysterics as they cast a laughing spell. Suddenly, a clown appeared, entertaining them with his antics until the tracker's laughter turned to horror as the clown sucked the life out of him, causing his death. Not long after, the clown resumed his performance and Hoagie couldn't help but burst into laughter. Then, Daniel urgently tried to intervene before the clown absorbed Hoagie's life force, but thankfully, he managed to revive his friend. As Hoagie teased Daniel about his preoccupation with the trackers over their friendship, he realized the hard truth and apologized for his behavior. As the clown show continued, Daniel came up with a plan to stop it, using Hoagie as bait to knock the clown off balance with a skull statue and end the spectacle for good. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lucy found herself under attack by Pie Maker and his henchmen. She consumed a vanishing magic pie, allowing her to evade their attacks and take the magic silver she sought from Pie Maker before fleeing the scene. Meanwhile, Daniel and Hoagie survived their punishment, and Jace and Shekilla suddenly appeared, having been locked up by Kel. Then, Jace revealed that Kel had detained them to prevent Daniel from obtaining the all-seeing eye of the Cyclops. Soon after, Kel claimed that he was punishing Daniel for breaking the tracking code. But Hector suspected that Kel was actually trying to prevent him from obtaining the Cyclops' all-seeing eye, which interfered with the business of the Tracker's Guild. As a result, Kel was punished with the same punishment wheel he had used on Daniel, and Hector announced that Daniel would be expelled from the Guild, with his neck tattoo disappearing. Meanwhile, Jace asked for Daniel's help in opening the Spellbound family's chest, but Hoagie was disappointed with Daniel's prioritization of tracking and left him. On the other hand, Lucy was lured into a trap set by her colleague Elise, who also wanted to find Primus Wand and had obtained magic silver from Pie Maker. Suddenly, she attacked Lucy, but Hoagie came to her rescue and took away Elise's magic silver. Then, he revealed his annoyance with Daniel's obsession with tracking and offered to help Lucy find the wand. The next day, Daniel, Jace, and Shaquilla were in hot pursuit of Bixby, hoping to retrieve the Mage Council ring. Soon after, Jace launched an attack on Bixby, forcing her to surrender the ring. However, she disclosed that she had sold the ring to a silver workshop that crafted magic silver. Without delay, the trio set out to locate the workshop, but discovered that only mages could activate the entrance. Fortunately, Daniel still had a mage's finger and he used it to gain access to the workshop. Elsewhere, Hoagie arranged a meeting between Lucy and Horaspex at Jace's headquarters. However, Horaspex was not pleased with the presence of the bureau officers and refused to assist them in locating Primus Wand. Then, Hoagie stepped in and tried to convince Horaspex by revealing Lucy's heroic act of defeating the villain Primus Camilla. He also vouched for her honesty by disclosing her secret desire for the wand. Daniel and his friends entered a peculiar silver workshop that resembled a restaurant. In this establishment, they could select magic ingredients that would result in silver being excreted from their bodies. However, if they chose the wrong components, the outcome would be entirely different. There, Daniel yearned for Hoga's presence as he had a knack for selecting the correct ingredients. Eventually, they selected four elements, but they were hesitant to consume the potion, fearing the outcome. Nevertheless, he decided to take the risk and ingested the potion. Miraculously, they obtained a silver piggy bank. Suddenly, Pie Maker arrived and rebuked them, stating that they were not true mages. Meanwhile, Lucy confessed to Horaspex that she had no desire to become Primus. Nevertheless, she feared that if someone else took the role, the outcome would be worse. She pledged to use the power bestowed upon the Primus to aid others and improve society. As it turned out, her words were true, and Horaspex agreed to help them locate the wand by guiding them to the first Primus, who had hidden it. Unfortunately, the first Primus had passed away. 
As a result, they resorted to astral projection by utilizing a magic silver seal to contact the Primus spirit in the afterlife. Back to Daniel, suddenly, the mechanic apprehended Daniel and his companions after discovering that they were not real mages. Pie Maker was outraged to see her sister's mage finger in Daniel's possession. In response, Jace defied Pie Maker and she poured a potion on him, turning him into silver. That moment, Daniel and Shikula attempted to escape but were thwarted by their adversaries. Suddenly, Jace melted the silver, reverting to his demonic form. He then attacked Pie Maker, transforming her into a demon. Soon after, Pie Maker and Jace assaulted the others, and Shakila attempted to revive Jace. Then, Daniel handed him the hammer and he returned to normal. Subsequently, Jace unleashed demonic magic from Pie Maker and they escaped. Later, at headquarters, Daniel demanded an explanation for why Pie Maker turned into an alchemist and attacked him on the ship. Then, Jace clarified that it was not his doing, but rather, another entity had taken over his body. The Warhammer awakened this entity, but it also made it stronger. With little time left, they hurried into the Primus Realm, hoping to find the wand using the magic silver piggy bank. The chest could only be opened with Primus Wand. At first, Daniel hesitated because Lucy was also looking for the wand. However, Jace reassured him that he only wanted to open the chest and not use the wand for anything malicious. Hearing that, he agreed to help Jace. As they performed astral projection, the magic silver began to burn, and they soon arrived at the Primus Spirit Realm. However, bureau officers, strict and numerous, guarded the place. So, to find the location of the wand, they had to abduct Primus first. Unexpectedly, Hoagie and Lucy appeared there. However, she was displeased to see Jace blocking her path and challenged him to a fight. Then, Daniel intervened, but Lucy felt that he had been favoring Jace over her. Sadly, her time was running out and her human form returned, making the bureau officers see and attack her as an intruder. After that, Lucy and Hoagie fled. At that time, Daniel and his group needed to find Primus Wand quickly, but first, they had to locate Primus himself. Shortly after, he entered a painting of a male Primus named Evan Gray, who belonged to the Spellbound family like him. Evan explained his role in safeguarding magical items from evil hands. Meanwhile, Lucy and Hoagie returned safely, but Horaspex was attacked by Elise, who had been following her to locate the wand. Soon after, Jace and Shakila also arrived, urging Daniel to hurry and find the wand. Then, Evan revealed that Lucy and Hoagie had previously visited him and explained the four exams needed to master the sales code. But Elise continued her attacks on Lucy and Hoagie, forcing them to reveal the wand's location. With time running out, the group had to hurry back before the magic silver ran out. Then, Evan bid farewell to Daniel, but when Jace's true form was exposed, Evan attacked them, and the battalion of officers chased after them. They had to make a quick escape. Fortunately, Daniel and Jace had made it to the exit, but Shakila was left behind. At that time, Jace wanted to go back for her, but Daniel insisted on saving her before leaving. As they were about to make their escape, they were surrounded by officers, but the door was impenetrable. Shortly after, Daniel used his iron hand and they were able to make it out safely. Shekila was still in shock from the ordeal, but Jace seemed unconcerned and instead urged them to go to the spellbound temple to find a stick. There, Daniel was irritated by Jace's lack of explanation and felt uneasy about Evan's sudden attack on them. Frustrated with Jace, Daniel decided to part ways and asked Shekila to come with him. But he wouldn't take no for an answer and continued to persuade Daniel to help him enter the temple. Suddenly, he transformed into a demon and attacked Daniel. In the chaos, Daniel disappeared without a trace. There, Shakila was confused and worried when Daniel suddenly vanished. She turned to Jace for answers, and he quickly found traces of a teleportation seal that indicated Daniel had been transported elsewhere. So, Jace broke the chain scales on Daniel's hand during their previous fight, which led Daniel to appear in the palace of a mermaid queen named Nurania. Suddenly, a fish creature attacked him, but it turned out to be Nurania's child, and Daniel was safe. Nurania explained that the chain scale guard had a safety system that returned Daniel to her when the chain scales broke. However, she was concerned when she saw the purple and blue magic on the chain scales, which turned out to be dread magic. Daniel revealed that it came from Jace's attack on him. Then, Nurania explained that dread magic was a dangerous force that could destroy the world if it returned. So, long ago, a mage had created it to gain unnatural power, and it was a hateful and evil magic that spread without limit. It took the efforts of many to seal it in a chest and sink it on an underwater island. There, Daniel wondered how Jace could know about dread magic. Shortly after, Nurania explained to Daniel that remnants of the evil dread magic were seeking to reunite with its primary source, which would cause the world's destruction. 
he realized that Jace was locked up in the soul box because he had touched an ancient magic artifact related to this. To stop it, they needed to find Primus Wand. But first, they needed to fix Daniel's broken chain scales, which only a fish named Spanos could repair. Nurania warned Daniel not to bring Spanos to her and asked him to stop Jace before dread magic could rise again. With Nurania's help, he set off to find Spanos, but was ambushed by a man who had kidnapped the fish. Meanwhile, Hoagie, Lucy, and Horaspex were tied up by Elise but Lucy used her baton staff to break the spell rope and free them. Inside the warehouse, Daniel fell into a trap controlled by the man who had kidnapped Spanos. The man was surprised to see the chain scales he had created on Daniel's hand and attacked him with Spanos. Spanos, I need your help. <laughs> Fortunately, he managed to catch the fish and locked it in a jar, forcing it to repair the chain scales. Whether he liked it or not, Spanos had to fix the problem, but he needed the help of his sister, Nurania. However, Daniel had promised not to involve Spanos in his issues with Nurania. Despite that, he broke his promise and brought Spanos to Nurania, who turned out to be his long-lost sister. Initially, they argued about their past and couldn't get along. Daniel intervened and encouraged them to express their frustrations with each other until they finally apologized. Sorry. And you're a pretty good queen, I guess. Once they reconciled, Nurania and Spanos worked together to improve the chain scales, which can now summon teleportation frogs and repel dread magic attacks. Meanwhile, Lucy and Hoagie were on a mission to retrieve Primus Wand, but they faced an obstacle when they couldn't locate the teleportation ice cream truck. Horuspex came to their rescue and teleported them to an arcade. On the other hand, Jace and Shakila had already arrived at Mount Merapi Selkuth and were trying to overcome the first obstacle when Lucy and Hoagie caught up to them. However, Jace attacked Lucy without warning, causing Hoagie to fall into a river of lava. Fortunately, Shakila was able to rescue Hoagie. and they decided to temporarily work together to overcome the obstacle course. Meanwhile, Daniel used a teleportation frog to travel to Selkuth. During their journey, Hoagie noticed that Daniel was not with Jace and asked where he was. However, Jace refused to answer and they split up, entering different doors. They faced their second obstacle casting a protective spell over a lava waterfall. Unfortunately, Lucy was not a skilled tracker and didn't know how to make magic spells. Suddenly, Daniel arrived riding a frog and explained Jace's true intentions of releasing dread magic by opening the spellbound chest. They needed to retrieve the Primus Wand before Jace could get his hands on it. With little time left, Daniel quickly concocted an anti-fire spell to help them pass through the lava waterfall. After successfully passing the waterfall, they faced their third hurdle opening a door by adjusting a mirror to reflect light. Meanwhile, Jace and Shakila were still struggling with the same obstacle. In a race against time, Daniel tried to open the door before the lava river overflowed and drowned them. Eventually, they managed to make it through, but when they looked back, Jace and Shakila were still stuck at the third hurdle. Shortly after, they charged through the final obstacle, desperate to retrieve Primus' staff from the body of a fearsome stone monster. Jace, using his demonic powers, managed to bypass the obstacle without breaking a sweat. At that time, Shakila breathed a sigh of relief when she saw that Daniel had made it through unharmed. However, when Jace made a move towards the spellbound chest, Daniel tried to stop him. However, Jace was undeterred by Daniel's objections. As they argued, Elise appeared on the scene, having sacrificed a bureau officer to clear the obstacle course for herself. Then, she cast a spell that left the group immobilized and demanded that Lucy retrieve the Primus Wand for her. If Lucy failed, Elise would kill Hoagie. Okay, okay, I'll do it. There, Lucy was perplexed about how to retrieve the wand from the stone monster's body. However, she soon realized that the key was not to defeat the monster but to submit to it since Primus' role was to serve magical power. The stone monster allowed Lucy to take the wand, but Elise snatched it away from her. Then, Elise declared that she would be the new Primus, leading the bureau with the powerful wand. Afterward, the stone monster swiftly punished Elise for her unworthiness, unleashing its wrath on all of them. Suddenly, a fierce battle erupted as they fought over Primus' scepter. There, Daniel and Hoagie were both attacked by the monster, but Shakila used her protective shield to save them. Suddenly, the wand flew to her, indicating that the stone monster had chosen her as the new Primus, likely because she had protected Hoagie, a magical creature. 
Then, Jace wasted no time and snatched Shaquilla away, hurling rocks at the others until they were trapped. They quickly boarded a teleportation ice cream truck and headed for the spellbound temple. However, Shaquilla was furious with him, feeling that he was no longer the older brother she once knew. Then, he explained that he was trying to regain his human form and asked Shaquilla to use Primus Wand to open the temple's doors. Meanwhile, Daniel and the others eventually made it to the temple thanks to a teleportation frog, but he tried to stop Shaquilla from opening the doors, knowing that it would result in the world's destruction. Despite his protests, Jace persisted in convincing Shekilla to open the temple. In the end, she opened the doors because she wanted her brother to regain his human form, even though it meant the possible destruction of the world. As soon as the temple doors were opened, Shekilla vanished, causing confusion and concern among the group. Soon after, Jace invited them in, explaining that Shekilla was already inside the temple. Upon entering, they discovered that she had been turned to stone, much like the other members of the Spellbound families present. There, Daniel was growing increasingly frustrated with the situation, while Jace seemed to have a more sinister motive. It was revealed that he had actually planned to use Shaquilla's sacrifice to gain access to the temple, where he could obtain Primus Wand and restore the power of magic. Daniel soon realized that Jace was being controlled by a demon who sought to gain power from dread magic. He stopped Jace from opening the chest and was transported to the spirit realm, where he encountered Evan, the first Primus. Then, Evan explained that dread magic could not be defeated, but it could be sealed in a soul box at the cost of a sacrifice. He also warned Daniel about the dangers of Jace opening the chest and potentially unleashing dread magic upon the world. Soon after, Daniel regained consciousness just in time to be attacked by Jace. They opened a chest and unleashed the power of dread magic, which possessed both of them. Afterward, Daniel and Jace attacked Lucy and Hoagie, causing them to fall into a ravine. Fortunately, they survived. You look better. Give me a sec. And Daniel explained that the only way to defeat dread magic was to obtain mucus from a mother iguana monster as it was immune to the magic's possession. Daniel attempted to collect the mucus but was sucked into the monster's nose. On the other hand, Lucy and Hoagie were left to fend off the iguana monsters, while Jace arrived at a bureau and infected an officer with dread magic. Meanwhile, Daniel managed to collect a significant amount of mucus from the mother iguana monster's nose after Lucy cast a sneeze spell on it. As a result, he was able to break free from the monster's grasp. Meanwhile, they watched helplessly when Jace attacked both the Bureau and the Alchemist headquarters. They knew they had to stop him before it was too late. Suddenly, the ice cream truck, connected to Jace's power, took them to his location. There, they planned to use the Iguana Slime and Primus Lost One to seal Dread Magic. However, this plan had a grave consequence Lucy would turn to stone. Just like Shekilla did. But she was willing to make the sacrifice to save the world. After that, they launched an attack on Jace, but they failed to seal Dread Magic. Primus One disappeared, and Jace proceeded to spread the magic around the world. Daniel then suggested that they look for another totem container that could hold the magic, as his own magic was not strong enough. Soon after, Lucy and Hoagie set out to find a powerful mage who could help them stop Dread Magic once and for all. Shortly after, Daniel went to Jace's base to get another totem item. There, he encountered Bixby and Hector, who had seized Jace's belongings. In a daring move, Daniel snatched the totem wand from Bixby, but Hector kicked him out of the Tracker's Guild. Daniel was undeterred by this setback. Not long after, Lucy and Hoagie returned with powerful mages, including Tyson, to help defeat Dread Magic. Then the mages combined their powers and cast a spell to eliminate Dread Magic using another totem instead of Primus Wand. However, they faced opposition from the trolls of Grey, mages, and possessed alchemists. One by one, the mages were possessed by Dread Magic, leaving Lucy to fight alone. Meanwhile, Hoagie fought against Pie Maker, who tried to stop them, while Daniel battled the Troll King of Grey. Amidst the chaos, Lucy attempted to seal Dread Magic once and for all. As Lucy attempted to seal Dread Magic, Jace channeled it to Daniel, but he had previously covered himself in Iguana Slime, rendering him immune to possession. Daniel purposely absorbed the Dread Magic from Jace and sealed it into a bottle, finally containing its power. In your face, Jake. Ah. 
Although Shekiller remained frozen, Lucy became the new Primus and secured the bottle in the Bureau's safe. However, remnants of dread magic still lingered, prompting her to seek Daniel's help in finding them. Meanwhile, he also had a mission to restore Hoga's humanity. As they were conversing, Haruspex suddenly appeared and brought Shekilla back to life by sharing a small piece of his soul. Despite their joy, she was still mourning the loss of her brother. Hogi then invited her to join their mission. Meanwhile, Daniel revealed that he was kicked out of the Tracker's Guild again. In the final scene, Burden was seen meeting Hector at the Cheat Code. He offered a Griffin Claw in exchange for the life of Daniel Spellbound. Little did they know, Burden was possessed by the remaining power of dread magic. The animation ends. The moral lesson of the animation is that sometimes our greatest strengths can also be our greatest weaknesses.